Marfan syndrome itself is actually not that uncommon as far as rare diseases go. I think one in 5,000 people have Marfan syndrome. But my son has what's called neonatal Marfan syndrome or infantile Mar Marfan syndrome. And um, that is extremely rare. And within the spectrum of even neonatal Marfan syndrome, my son was on the unfortunately very severe end of things. Marfan syndrome is a connective tissue disorder. And because connective tissue is essentially the glue that holds our body together, it affects many, many, many systems. Um, I think at one point I counted, Andy had 26 doctors and specialists. So it was very scary. At first, we didn't really know what the outcome would be. And in kids that have neonatal Marfan syndrome, because the spectrum is so vast, um, there are kids that have neonatal Marfan syndrome that have lived um, into their early 20s. And there are a lot of babies that die. Um, because the, one of the major defects in neonatal Marfan syndrome is um, going into heart failure. And while Andy had a heart defect, fortunately, his major issue was not his heart. Unfortunately, it was his lungs. Um, but, you know, it was just, it was just a free for all, just trying to figure out how to navigate this world of doctors and appointments. And we got involved with early intervention when he was six weeks old. Andy was actually quite easy as far as his disposition goes, and he always slept incredibly well, um, which my second child does not. That is a very early riser, but Andy was just always so sweet. He just he just rolled with the punches, and he really never knew any other way. So he just was very tolerant of all of these things that were going on in his life. Um, and he always became kind of like the little star of his, one. you know, whatever he was doing, you know, the, his EI therapist absolutely adored him. Um, you know, Marfan syndrome, even though it really affects, especially neonatal Marfan syndrome, it affects so many systems of the body. So, you know, he had emphysema, he had bronchiomalacia, he was legally blind, he was born with glaucoma, he had nystagmus, strabismus, his eye conditions. Um, he had a very severely enlarged aortic root. Um, he was extremely long um, and had very severe scoliosis. He had hip dysplasia, so he wore like a hip harness for several months. Um, he wore a helmet for several months because his, his head was um, a little bit oddly shaped. Um, and there were just so many things. He, he had trouble eating, so he had a feeding tube, um, and he was on oxygen the first six months of his life. So by looking at him, I think a lot of people initially thought that cognitively he wasn't all there, but he, he it, um, actually does not affect anyone, you know, your cognitive abilities at all. It's a purely physical manifestation.